all right what is going on everyone and welcome to a special grind video so today we are going to be trying out the marnie realm for swamp nagas and this was actually a requested one by a lot of you guys so i'm gonna be honest i have never actually done the marnie realm for this because so we'll see what it is today and the reason why i've never done this one was because when I went for the Drain Night Cups or everything, I always did Bloody Monastery, and uh, I like that one a little bit more. But apparently this one is the easier version, which at which recommends 260 up AP, where this one is uh, 280. And um, so yeah, I've grinded here very, like, not a lot, but I've done it, but I've never done the Marnie Realm either. So... With that said, what we're going to do is learn everything today. Uh, I don't actually know if Agris is good here or not. So in our, in our case of testing, we're just going to keep it off. So with that said, let me pop a buff. Pop this thingy. Uh, might as well use it because I don't know what else. Anyway, so this is the whole Marnie realm. And let's see what it's all about. And we don't actually need anything here. We're just kind of here. Oh, yeah, we got to turn on the bell's heart. Also, let me know how the audio is. I've been adjusting things a lot. And so I'm curious to know what your feedback is. Let me. Oh, yeah. Pets are on agile. All right, so let's see. Since we are in the Marnie realm, where do we actually go from here? I believe it's just going from pack to pack and hoping for the best. In theory, this should be easier than Monastery, but I don't know. It's more dense, so I've heard. Oh yeah, let me turn this on to trash loot. Is the audio like too loud or too quiet? And you guys may be wondering, why do you do this in the Marnie realm? And the answer is because for the series of the year, what I wanted to do is mostly try it out in the Marnie realm. That way, it's going to be the golden standard for everyone. So whether you're a new player or not, just learning how to grind the area, the Marnie Realm is one where you can go uninterrupted for one hour a day. And so everyone can see what it's like. Obviously, in certain places, there are better spots. And um, I'll talk about those in other videos. So if you want to see the other videos that I've done on the channel for various grind spots, Check the link in the description we have the playlist but this one uh i actually don't remember I, this one at all where is the exit or not exit for the marnie realm but like the wall was hidden So I actually actually have no idea uh, if this one is better. I assume since it's more dense, you get more like shards an hour, which is why I assume most people are here. But at the end of the day, if you're not going for shards in particular, you're here for money. Also, it doesn't help with the loot being so fast. I, like, my pets are good, right? I have, like, tier 5 and 4, and I still have to manual loot a little bit. So let me try something. Pull this one. I was hoping they would uh, all just group up. <laughs> I 
Our goal is to see how many shards we can get. Is this really, like, supposed to be easier than... Easier than Monastery? For some reason, that just... Doesn't seem true. Like, this feels like it would be more difficult. Also, I heard that the silver is, like, dependent on whether you get a nail or not. Oh, of course. Like, every time I grind Elvio Realms, when you don't need the spirit, you get a lot of them. But when you do need it, you don't get any of them. I'd like to assume if you you don't have a lot of gear and you're grinding here, try not to get CC'd. I assume that's the play. Oh boy, got invaded. So, what's funny is the gimmick of a lot of these spots is you know how the Nagas and the Fogans are like at war with each other? <clears throat> if you grind in either of the spots, or like the Fogan or Naga one, you can get invaded by the other one, which is pretty interesting. Overall, I feel like this is realistically the same, though. Like, whether you're in the Marty realm or not. I think either way, he'll be fine. I think the hardest part is just manual looting everything. But when in doubt, just stick to the edges of the map of the realm and you'll be good. Dang, it's been a while since I've had to manual loot. What is actually considered good trash per hour here? So I guess the real question is, how many more shards an hour do you get compared to uh, other spots? Because assuming you can grind all the higher end ones, obviously the orc camp is the most profitable for straight up silver. Okay, so these don't really pull because when you kill them, they just spawn like a ton of ads. So I guess you do them three at a time. It's actually like, I don't have a lot of experience here at Nagas. For the blue ones, I went for 
bogans and yellows were uh monastery and then reds were at work camp all the way Manual looting in 2023. By the way, if you haven't already got it from the uh, Pearl Shop, there's they're giving away like costumes and various other stuff for silver. Uh, let me just show you. Oh, hold on. This thingy right here. Make sure to get them before the event ends. The new player experience, boys, when you don't have pets. I actually think I kind of liked it better when I didn't have any, uh... <laughs> well, not, that's not true, but like, well, you know how right now I have the spirit buff on? It makes it so I actually have to stand there looting. But yeah, this seems like a pretty straightforward rotation. Just like either hug the edge of the Marnie realm or run around a ring. Also, in case you have no idea what these are for, uh, one, you vendor it, but in case you were wondering what they're used for, it's, um, you combine them with your black star armors. It's like an, like a material needed for that. And basically it's supposed to be like the equivalent of, uh, capricing your black star armors, but it's not worth it. Like you shouldn't have black star armors in the first place. And even if you did, trying to go for pen is kind of sus. So, I would say for most people, get your... If you have a black star for some reason, like an armor, and you're just like, oh, it's too late, I already have one. What you should do is get it to Tet, um, try to sell out that Tet, buy a Fallen God or Labresca, and then just go from there. Otherwise, don't try to upgrade those... You're just lighting a lot of silver on fire. Not good. Can you even hear the music in the background? I know a lot of people said that it was kind of high before, so I lowered it. But the goal is um, 
to make sure you can still hear it but at the same time you can still hear me Honestly, this feels like, I wouldn't say tougher, but it feels like it would be more s intense than uh, Bloody Monastery. Just because if you get like CC'd and you know how the big packs come out when you kill the, uh, what, what are these things called? The commanders and then the waves start spawning. If you get like knocked down with like less gear, I think that would actually unironically hurt more than being hit by monastery cold fists this might be like one of the weirder things i've said but I liked it. I like grinding this spot without the little buff, the spirit thing. Like, yeah, I clear a little bit slower, but my loot speed is like, it feels like it's on pace <laughs> where I'm not like manually looting and my pets are going just as, uh, just as fast. Obviously the spirit buff is significantly better and overall better, but I have to manual loot. More or less. Mmm, man, I wish that came out like a minute later so I can actually save it. They don't follow. That might, this one might be cutting it extremely close by the time my cooldown is up. So far, what I'm seeing is this place. Well, I mean, I already kind of knew this from grinding before, but it's like, if you're here in this exact spot, you're here for the shards. Your money is not so great, but the shard drop rate is insane. Well, I guess more than the others, I guess. But anyway, uh, if you're there for money, Monastery is pretty solid. Orcs is pretty solid, as you may imagine. Orcs and Hex, in case you guys don't know, because uh, I think in a day or two or is when people are starting to get their, like, Golden Blessing of Agris things again. So, if you have extras, uh, Orcs is the best place, followed by Elvia Hex.
So I might actually do another orc video. But I don't know. It just kind of feels weird doing orc videos. Because you see videos on YouTube where people are doing like 40 to 50k trash loot. However, they are playing the Mega Cracked classes. And I already know that I can't do that on Dark Knight. No matter how good you are. There are some classes that are just straight up better. Of that spot, it's very contested. I feel like I should skip this that one at the bottom. That one's for like zoom zoom classes. Also, I've been doing a lot of testing whether the 100% here is worth it using it or just a Black Spirit Rage. And I think the extra 100 from uh, the Lunacy is pretty solid. So let's see, we've been here for like 20 minutes, right? And we have five shards. I'd say that's pretty good. In my literal thousands of hours grinding a total of all the uh, LVO spots, you average around 10 an hour of most things. And at Oryx, you get a little bit less, but at uh monastery i think you get like between five to eight an hour uh if you're doing fogans i think you get like average about 10 to 12 an hour but those are blue and then so for this spot in 20 minutes getting five of them is pretty solid but i guess that's a trade-off because when we look at the silver in 40 minutes it's going to be like, lol. You know what, guys? I don't know what the market looks like for all the cups of jewelry and accessories now are, but maybe I'll just buy one or make another one and sell it on the market for two mil. I, it's not worth selling it for two mil, but might as well help the community out. You know what I still agree with? They should raise the price of uh, Garmoth's heart to match uh, Vel's heart prices. Because obviously getting a Vel's heart, you only need one of them. But Garmoth's heart, you need three of them. Or at least two of them. Three is only if you kind of go hard on the game and you use both Kudum and Nuver. And then obviously your awakening weapon. But. And the uh, super hardcore players that have uh, Shies as well, you need four of them. Because uh, apparently the soul does not carry over with the tag. Which is actually pretty dumb.
Also, by the way, I'm only I'm using XP crystal or not XP, but like uh, XP artifacts or lightstone combo. So could be doing more, but I wanted to just also EXP check here as well. what we could do kill all these get the loot come back to the other spot get more loot I don't know about that idea seems kind of scuffed I can assure you that I will not be back here again after this hour. We're doing it for the video. It's for you guys. This is what Goku Spirit Bomb should have been. And everything's just dead. I don't know how many of you guys actually watched uh, like OG Dragon Ball. Remember? I mean, this is so long ago. The OG one. When Goku charged a Spirit Bomb like nine episodes and then he finally missed and I was like wow he throws it and then straight up just misses I just lolled oh, of course you get a lot of them when you don't need it that's how it works I know you can get those uh, nails that are basically lunar things. You can get those there too. Wow, seated avoids. The drop rate for those must be like mega low. At or camps, they're pretty decent. I can get like 10 of them an hour, 10 or more. Invaded again. Hey, six of them. That's pretty good. I guess the polls itself, like, considering you have to loot and. Like, here's the thing I have max pets on Agile. And I still have to manual loot, just to give you an idea. So, I guess it doesn't really matter which pulls are in the pack you do, because what matters is, um... Huh. 
do you have good pets kind of thing. Clear speed is irrelevant. Well, I mean, it's not irrelevant, but pets are more important is what I'm trying to get at. Loot. This is how uh, gathering at Navern felt. What? Anyone who's ever gone for the piece of uh, the Voltaris clairvoyance, you know exactly how this feels. Nuke birds. Loot. Repeat. So let's see, these are worth uh, 18k trash loot. And you get a little under. A little under 10,000 an hour. However, I am not using Agris, so to give. I guess a comparison would be. I grind Histria with Agris, and I make about. 21,000 trash loot an hour. That's roughly like 300 something mil. I would like to assume it's around this much as well. And the AP recommendations are mostly the same. So I assume in trash loot, give or take a bit, you're making the same as Histria. However, you are like the item you're going for here is a little bit different so at history you're getting a lot of scrolls capris uh, obviously compass pieces is why most people are there and everything here you're going for shards so however much you value a shard at i think overall it balances out Skill point. Eh, eh. I actually didn't even know they were there. I suppose I should factor in the uh, other loot. Oh, that's actually less, but roughly the same. So we're at like 9,000 right now, technically, if you count invader ones.
We're back to normal people damage. Fifteen till Zarka. Honestly, I've been doing more world bosses lately. Mostly because I just need the um like boss boxes. Because uh the eventual goal when Megu and Wusa Awakening comes out is I wanna make their awakening weapon and try them out like a black star. I think that'd be pretty cool. didn't even want to follow okay well holes in here are scuffed by the way even if you already have like a buff from the spirit or if you are on cooldown it's always good to take it because you get this five minute whispers and it's just three percent extra or three damage more will you notice anything probably not is it nice to have yeah Let's deposit these in Heidel. We got about like 9,800 if we count both of them, which I am because if I just skipped all the invaders, I would be at the same thing from just figuring out the others, which I think is actually to play looking at the Bogan loot versus this one. I think the play is actually skipping. I feel like I should skip that one as well. Because uh it's kinda out of the way. Oh. Oops. Also keep in mind I'm only on uh two hundred percent item loot. If you were doing this, uh, obviously with a tent or anything, you'd be at like roughly 250. Or if you had the node connected and had that maxed out, that's another 10%. So technically you could be at like 270 to 300, depending on what events and like items you use. But for the sake of your average tester, with just a loot scroll on, it is what it is.
Dang, that hundred didn't even nuke the commanders. I will say though, this 100% lunacy of Vadir kind of sucks in uh, PvP. Like you've seen Zerker hundreds and everything, but then you use this in PvP and like especially a Arena of Solaire. My God, it does like no damage <laughs> to the point where you're better off just. Uh, Beating your group mates or Zing yourself when you have a hundred percent. And then even though like things you look out for if you're fighting a DK and you think they're gonna use it, just V out of it. Like you have that animation where you throw your sword up if you can see that. Then uh yeah, just V out of it. How much XP did we get? Like 0.2% here. That's not good. Oh, we got two of them. All right, let's take one. Not sure that was worth it. Yeah, this spot. Not looking so great. But then again, I also knew that going in. Honestly, I think this spot, in very particular, is going to depend on how good your pets are. Like, anything else, maybe not so much. Like, I'm pretty sure if I lowered my gear score just to barely meet the uh, AP caps, I would, I can still do, like, better or worse than some people that have also the same pets and if you have uh tier threes obviously you're gonna do just worse in general probably not a good spot for you even if you have very good gear And then when you get the spirit buff, that honestly, like, yeah, it helps, but at the same time, you just have to manual loot faster. Like this is, it just feels like there's more.
Didn't today... Well, okay, so when I'm recording this is the 27th of March. And didn't Korea get the new region today? Man, that feels bad. Here we are. <laughs> no, or... No, no, I think they get it tomorrow, which... I mean, it would be nice if NA can get it tomorrow, too. NA and EU, literally everyone else and Korea get it all at the same time. Wouldn't that be nice? But here we are. It was actually like an infograph somewhere or you could see a Pearl Abyss earnings or like the yearly earnings and my god, dude, North America and Europe make Pearl Abyss the most money yet Korea gets everything, all the content first. At least you use that money to hire some translators and or people who will uh, localize everything. Even as a veteran player, when people ask me, like, do I spend a lot of money on this game? The answer is no. Like, the only time I actually spend money is, like, when I'm out of a value pack or there's a good sale. And for people that are wondering what are, like, good pearl sales is, like, the one plus one thing. You know how, like, if you spend $60 or equivalent, the 6,000 pearl bundle, and then you get another one for free, basically? That's like the only time I spend money these days on pearls. Or if they come out with like something like I feel like I really want like a new costume to use, but that's about it. I haven't felt the urge to spend money in the past like year on this game. Also, like, once you get to the higher levels, there's nothing really for you to get. The only thing I would say endgame players buy with pearls these days are obviously artisans if you enhance a lot. If you don't enhance a lot, you don't get artisans. Um, I guess what I see people doing is obviously if you do, like, role-playing or you just, like, character creation and stuff. If you main a class, you buy the costume for it because you like it. Obviously, uh, Croning, you would buy that for that. But I think, realistically, for your average person who's not a high spender, what you spend your money on is probably, like, one of those value packs. Value packs and maybe those old moon or comma, comma blessings. That's about it. And then, whenever they have a good sale on whatever else. I hope with the new region, they come out with, like, a lot of nicer outfits for all the classes. Let's group up. Zarka.
Yeah. Wow, S rank on a plant. What kind of knowledge do I have on everything here? Hmm. Eventually, the goal is going to be to uh, get all the ecology for the loot rate and everything. But man, I feel like that's such a waste of time for me. I could be grinding other places, but... And getting more silver. But eventually, like, I do actually want the energy. Because I think the cap right now for energy, assuming you've done everything, is like 650. So that means I have about 100 energy worth of stuff I could do. But man, grinding, going back and grinding lower end spots that are kind of irrelevant sucks. And the best way to have been doing it or to alleviate this for like veteran players who haven't done it is basically coming up with the Elvia realm monsters for a lot of older spots. So I think that'll help. Uh, that's all they have to do on the spots that no one goes to anymore. Just make it in the Elvia. Elvia mobs that are very high up and that literally fixes the problem but you know Pearl Abyss is out here making half ass classes like Wusa and Megu and then players get to sit without awakening for six months now that's fun you know get a half completed class for half a year That is such a dumb decision. I hope I hope the community comes together as one and being like, we don't like this. Although, like, I'm not saying Wusa and Megu were boring. They were actually really fun. I thought they were both very good in general. But it just feels so bad, like having a half completed class, like where you only have succession or something right now, and then Awakening comes out half a year later. That's dumb. It should just be done on launch or you know i was even okay with you know succession coming out first and awakening like a month later you know it's, it doesn't it's not the worst but like literally half a year later is you know a little bit too much it's just like you don't care about the players And it's like, if you can't finish them in a reasonable amount of time, just don't release it. I know money is a thing and they have to come out with new content, but I feel like that's not the right way to go about it. But what do I know? I've been playing various MMOs for over 20 years. And this is the first game that comes out with like half completed classes i've seen okay so just to clarify on that imbalanced classes where something is op or just it sucks that's a different story those can be fixed easily well not easily but those are more worked on than just having the classes not only broken <laughs> but half of their kits not even available so Oh well, just my complaints. I'm just gonna go for another four minutes to make it like or maybe four or five minutes just to make it a fair hour not uh, an extra hour and, and five
I think if I were to come here again and clean up my rotation a little bit more, I'll just make my circle a lot smaller. Because I think I've been going around the edge of the Marnie realm, and I think they spawn a lot faster than that, so there's no need to go all the way around the edge. Like, you don't have to go do those. I'm pretty sure I could just go straight up from here and have a little cleaner route. But at the same time, it's the Marnie realm. You do what you want. So yeah, feel like you could just go here. Increase the damage of, uh, Lunacy 100. So, while we're winding down this video, let's talk about this spot. I mentioned it obviously a few times in a few minutes ago, but as a conclusion and a summary, this spot is more dependent on your pets and how good they are. I feel like someone with 30 less AP than I do, or I have, can do the same thing as me as long as you're beating like an ap cap or something it really just depends on how fast you're looting clear speed is secondary well i mean as long as you're roughly the same then it comes down to pets coming next so would i fix anything Nah, this spot seems pretty balanced. Like, it's not a lot of silver, but you get a lot of these shards, which is, I assume, why you're here. Because if you can get more silver, or if you wanted more silver, you'd be at orcs or monastery, or just literally not here. <laughs> Let's start heading back to my horse now. Let's turn this off. I'll consider this an hour. Um, turn off that. So we got seven, seven of these, 16 of those, and some trash loot. Let's go back to, let's go back to town and sell everything and see how much we got. Uh, 
get out of Elvia. That was with roughly 200% item drop rate and no node connected. At least I don't think so. Yeah. Nope. No node. I'm sure you could do better with uh, more drop rate and everything. Get like 10 of them an hour on average. But I've actually never done that in the Marnie realm before. And realistically, it felt the same. So, if you grind out in the open and do random stuff, pretty sure you just like non Marnie Realm is the same effect. All right, let's uh, calculate everything. So, about 260 black stones, which is pretty nice. 48 mil. Three hundred and thirty nine mil. And then two hundred and sixty. That's probably another sixty. And then whatever other goodies we got here. I would say we made around four hundred mil an hour there. No aggress. Or yeah, no aggress. Just level two, normal grind. Not too bad. Uh I think you're there for the shards. That's about it. So anyway, with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.